Okay, let's talk about self-inductance for a minute. So let's say we close this switch. At the very instant so we close this switch, we are not going to reach our maximum current immediately. Let's just say for a second that this is 12 volts and this is six ohms. What would be the current in this circuit typically? What would we say? So 12 volts, six ohms, delta V equals IR ohms law, so we get two amps current. Cool, but we don't hit that two amps immediately. It actually grows, and it doesn't take very long, but we're gonna grow to that two amps again, just kind of like we discussed. And so in this case, we're gonna have initially an increasing current going around this way. And because we have an increasing current, then the magnetic field created by this current in the, the wire itself is gonna cause a changing magnetic field and a changing flux up until we reach that peak value of two amps. And so in this case, the wire itself feels its own magnetic field. And so it's inducing a back EMF, if you will, in its own magnetic field. We call this self-inductance. And I call it a back EMF, which is not really proper, but whatever. So in this case, if you look, where's the magnetic, uh, where's the magnetic field? Well, we can point in a variety of directions. Uh, in this case, what we're gonna end up doing is having to create, since the current's increasing, so, and this current increasing in this loop going around this direction, it would create a magnetic field at the center pointing which direction? Into the board. Into the board. So then we're gonna induce a current pointing out of the board. And so because this has self-inductance, so what we'll find out an inductor actually does is it actually opposes the rate of change in the current. And so this current wants to get from zero up to two amps the moment we close the switch. So, but due to self-inductance, we're gonna oppose that and it's gonna take some time to get there. We don't instantaneously get there. So, and it's actually self-inductance is the reason why we don't instantaneously get there. Chris? So why did you say the um, current goes into the board? And not the so, so here our current's gonna travel this direction in the clockwise fashion, right? So, and it would create a magnetic field pointing into the board, oh, right? So, and creating a magnetic field pointing into the board, that's increasing as the current is increasing. That's a change in flux that also points into the board, which would actually, according to Lenz's law, want us to oppose that with a current going the opposite direction. And so in this case, the self-inductance here opposes the current flowing clockwise with counterclockwise, and it still net flows clockwise, it just doesn't instantaneously go up to two amps, it builds up to two amps. And we'll find out in a little bit that, you know, this graph of I versus time would look something like that. And it builds up to two amps. And it's just there's self-inductance that's opposing the growth of that current. All right, so if we look at L here, L is again called inductance. So it's not mutual inductance this time, it's just inductance for our self-inductance. And it also again has units of Henry's. We saw what a Henry is and stuff like this. And if you look at kind of rearranging this a little bit, you can solve for L, and I've done that on your handout here, and that's where you get your definition of inductance. And we get this guy here. So, and if you look, initially I wrote it with the changes, delta I and change in flux and stuff like that. So, but why is the flux changing? What's causing it? Changing, changing magnetic field. What's causing the changing magnetic field? The changing, the changing current. So this change is responsible for this change and at the end of the day we can get rid of both changes because they're the same change or at least coming from the same source. Cool. But just a couple more equations here to realize. So by the way, L here. So it's difficult to actually calculate and stuff like that, but it's, it's just related to geometry and other factors of the circuit itself.